Hi, if you're an architect who loves getting the best quality render with little or no effort, or maybe you're just a render enthusiast who loves playing with cool render apps and create beautiful images, then welcome to Twinmotion 2019. Twinmotion 2019 is by far one of the best architectural rendering solutions out there and this is because it's built on top of the Unreal Engine which is also known to be a triple A game engine for super realistic images, renders which has also been used for creating product and architectural design. Most importantly, the Unreal Engine is known for its real-time game rendering which has amazing qualities and the same qualities is what Twinmotion gives to you without the learning curve of the Unreal Engine. In this short series of tutorial, I will go through the new features that comes with Twinmotion 2019 which includes the reflection probes, the decals, the measuring tool, the lighting updates and the perspective correction that comes with the new version of Twinmotion 2019. We'll also look at the visual effects and much more. We'll also go through the fundamental features that a new user needs to know before getting their feet wet with Twinmotion 2019. If you're new to Twinmotion, you don't have to worry because no previous knowledge is required. My name is Anselm from AskNK and I'll be showing you around Twinmotion 2019. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video. Let's suppose that you're writing a really important email to a colleague. Or a post on Facebook that all your friends will see or a paper for your English class that you just have to get an A on. With Twinmotion open, let's simply start by uh, looking at how the UI is arranged for our use and then how we can navigate around the UI and also within the viewport. If you look at the left-hand uh, corner, you're going to find the library. Within the library, that's where the material, the vegetation, the light, characters, vehicles, volumes, and uh, a custom user library is located. Above here is where we can find the menus which we can use. Basically, these are all you need to work inside of Twinmotion. And just in case you're working within a region here and you find it a little bit hard to travel all the way up here all the time, there's a bugger menu here that eases the stress of going up and down. Now, if you want to create something inside your scene, there are two ways of creating stuff. First of all, you can go by uh, clicking on the import button here, and using the import button, you can import your file, say, from different digital content creation apps, which could be either 3D Studio Max, Revit, Archicad, or SketchUp. And if I click on open, you're going to find the file types that it accepts. So with this file type, you can import files directly inside Twinmotion. I'm going to close this and click on cancel. Other ways you can bring things inside of your viewport is by going over to the library section, selecting a particular object you want and dragging it right into your viewport. This way you can look around it by simply holding the shift with the middle mouse and you can rotate around an object. You can still scroll in and scroll out to zoom closer or zoom further away from your object. The ways which we can interact with our object include uh, translating this object upwards and downwards, clicking over to this part and selecting rotate, which gives us the ability to rotate our object to a given angle and also click and hold and using the scale which we can use to scale our object up and down. You can choose to use the shortcut key on your keyboard. By pressing 4, you switch to translate. By pressing 5, you switch to rotate. And by pressing 6, you switch to scale. 
this would come in handy especially when you're working in complex scene and you don't have the luxury of going here all the time to switch within the menu. Getting around your object can be quite easy. When you press down the middle mouse and push up, you can move the whole scene upwards and downwards, which means you can pan the scene upwards and downwards. And if you uh, press the middle mouse, you can also pan the scene left and right. Also remember that holding the shift key with the middle mouse can also rotate the object around. So all you have to do is press down shift, hold down the middle mouse and rotate around. We can still travel inwards and outwards of our scene, not just using the mouse key alone, but also pressing W, which takes us in, A takes us to the left, D takes us to the right, and S takes us backward. You can still choose to move up and down by using E as the key to move downwards and Q as the key to move upwards. Basically your typical kind of game shortcut keys. And if for any reason you don't find uh, these shortcut keys for your moving around your scene comfortable, you can easily go over to the help menu Click on navigation and then you can switch to what navigation suits your need. So if you're coming from 3D Studio Max, you can click on 3D Studio Max and it changes automatically. Now you just have to use the Alt and the middle mouse button. If you're coming from SketchUp, you can only use the middle mouse button, then you can use Shift to pan. Or maybe if you're coming from Revit or if you're coming from Archicad, you can also change those there. The sidebar here can be used to access the element that's been added onto your scene. For example, if I drag in this 10 meter cylinder inside here, it appears here. So with this, we can see what and what has been added into our scene. And from here onwards, we can choose to either keep them or delete them or maybe just hide them just in case we don't want to see them for the time being. Also, other uh, things you need to take note of is the eye menu, which or the, the eye icon which we have here, can be used to change the time of day depending on what you want to see or depending on what you're looking for or depending on the kind of scene you are uh, going for. The buttons that you find here, they contain various menus which we're going to look at in subsequent videos. So basically, this is how you get your way around Twinmotion. If you go over to the statistics panel here and click statistics, you will be able to find out uh, how many frames per second your scene is running. And then you're going to find out uh, every other thing that has to do with performance issues here. Now it's saying good, but over time, if the PC begins to lag or maybe you have tons of objects in your scene, and your PC can no longer refresh at a comfortable rate, you're also going to be notified here. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Wake up, sunshine. Oh, hey there, Chris. Let's make this morning a little more interesting. Quicker. Let's say you want to rotate around a particular subject. I'm just going to click on this character. To focus on this character, navigating within this, let's say using this and navigating all the way like this, might be a bit challenging. So you can tap the F key to focus on the character. And with the character being in focus, you can hold the shift key and now we can rotate around this character. This subject will turn to a point of rotation. Yeah. And here we can deal with the context, the parts, the camera, measure tool, and the align tool. Here we can deal with the, uh, the vegetation, the localization, and the weather. Now, this works in a very different way which means that if you haven't gotten an image saved, you can have access to all of these 
here you can have access to all of this within this part we can change how much uh, clouds we want to get and we can go back and change um, how much sun we want to have inside our scene and all that but once you have an image saved let's say you come here and you create a new image automatically you no longer have access to this thing you no longer have access the only time you're going to have access to it is when you click on this menu and you hit the delete button and then you can come back and have access to it the reason is because when you have this object uh, when you have this image created twin motion gives you the ability to change all of this relatively to the image which you're creating so let's say i need rainfall in this particular image one and i want to create another image and i don't need rainfall in that image i can simply come over to this image go over to the weather and switch it all the way back to a nice sunny sky and if i switch i can now have an image with rainfall and an image without rainfall so that is why you no longer have access to the localization weather and lighting once you have your image saved other things that you can see here is the third button here which has to do with exporting of images so if you want to export a certain image you can just click here and select the image which you want to export so i want to export image 2 or image 3 i can click there and export the image there's also another node which we have here that has to do with every single element that we have so basically i call here the inspector bar which simply means it's more like an outliner you can choose to select a view stuff uh, based on the filters that exist so let's say if i select characters i can see all of the characters that i have inside of my scene i can take all of them out and i can push them back all the way in and i can switch back to object and i can get to see all the objects i have and so on and so forth Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video. If you write anything on your computer, you need to get Grammarly. I write pretty much all day, every day, and Grammarly makes my writing better. As a student, I like that it's free. It actually is correcting everything as I'm writing it. Hi. So working with objects inside of Twinmotion 2019 is uh, pretty easy. How you can work with this object is simple. We've already looked at how we can manipulate the object, but then how do we make copies of the object or maybe snap them from one point uh, to another? And uh, we're going to look at this in this uh, very short tutorial. So we already know that we can grab objects out of um, the library by just going to whatever library that we prefer and dragging the object all the way out. For an object like this, we can also make multiple copies of this object simply by holding down shift, clicking and dragging, defining the distance which we want. And if we need multiple copies of this, on releasing the shift and the left mouse button, we can specify the numbers of uh, instances or copies that we want and then click on OK. Other things that we can do with objects is we can also make another copy from here. I'm simply going to click and drag and then select OK. But now instead of uh, rotating this, with my mouse hovering around the rotation uh, section of my gizmo, I can type 180, which turns the whole seat 180. This is uh, going to reduce the hassles of trying to rotate this all the time when working inside of twin motion all of this selected if i hold down control i can add to a selection and if i hold down control i can take out of a selection so i'm just going to go ahead and hold down control and add all of this to the selection and when i'm done i can also hold down shift click and drag this all the way out and say okay and then i can now go ahead 
in various situations of uh, your design or maybe your rendering or texturing stage, you may be uh, presented with either a challenge of changing the color of an object, uh, the color of maybe a component inside of Twinmotion. Not all components are, or not all components has that ability. Some components, are, their materials are just baked directly inside of them. Why some of them you can actually go around by playing with the texture and material that they come with. So I'm going to uh, select the eye picker tool, which in Twinmotion is regarded as the material picker. And then I'm going to select our cylinder. And from here you can see that I can change the material or the way the cylinder reacts to the environment. I can turn down the scale of the cylinder, which has to do with the scale of whatever material that is being assigned to it. If I go over here where we have the color, I can click and change it to whatever color I choose. And at the same time, you see because we have GI on, you can see that the color is bouncing off this uh, part. A very good example for the scale is the floor. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the floor. And now if I start pushing the scale all the way up, and we begin to see that the floor tiles get bigger as we uh, push the scale all the way up. So other things that we can see from here is we can actually come here and then we can put an overlaying color on top of the tile, uh, on top of our ground plane, so to speak. So let's say I want it to be a bit more reddish. So if I push it towards the red, it begins to get a bit more reddish. I can push it towards the blue just to add some tint to it. So if we look at this part, we see that weather is turned on, which means that our floor is affected by the weather at any time during your simulation or during your loop and development state. So you can turn this off and you can turn it on. Over here at the settings, we can increase the bump size, we can reduce the bump size. So like now, as I'm beginning to reduce the bump size, you see our object, our floor plane uh, material here is automatically flat. So we can push it all the way up and we can push it all the way down. The metallicness also, it um, makes the floor or makes the material have that metal finish. So if we let's say we're working on a material and we want to add some sort of metal shine to it, we can increase the metallicness. But now for the floor, this is of no use. At the same time, we can increase the glow value just to make the floor glow. This is totally up to you it's on what you're going for. The concrete sound here is the sound that we can hear when a character is moving on top of this object. If you look down here, you're going to see the more button, which means that once we click this button, we can, can change the texture. Let's say you have a defined texture you want to add to your floor. If you click here, you can go ahead and hit the open and add the texture that you are looking for or your desired texture, so to speak. We also have objects that do not support this. For example, I think the rocks do not support this. This should be a very big rock, so to speak. So if I click on the rock, it doesn't support us changing the material. Instead, what happens is the rock is invisible to the material picker. So some objects do not support you changing what the texture looks like, maybe pro most probably because they are baked in, while some gives you that liberty to play with it and change it to fit uh, what you desire. At the same time, we have some objects inside here, or we have some components that are considered to be non-visible components, things like sound. So, for example, if you have a sound you want to add to your project, you can simply go over to volumes and go to sound. And maybe if you want to add nature sound, 
you can come through and pick the nature sound which you want to use and apply the nature sound here. So if I pick a sound from here and place it somewhere within the scene, we'll begin to hear the sound. This is a non-visible, it's a non-visible component, which means that during render time you don't see it. The only time you can see it is when you come over here and maybe you pick the sound and then you can either turn it off or turn it on, which is the visibility and invisibility, or you can turn it off here or turn it on here. They also have some other stuff as well that may be non-visible, which at the end of the day, they might not be able to render things like the, the section they are also non-visible as well. They are also non-visible as well. But so I can just simply cut through this and cut above it as well. So this is going to be great for architects, especially when you want to cut through a section in your project. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Στο Inter College σπουδάζεις μαγειρική και ζεχαροπλαστική και αποκτάς το μοναδικό πτυχίο ισότιμο και αντίστοιχο πανεπιστημιακού επίπεδου σε Κύπρο και Ελλάδα. Σύγχρονες εγκαταστάσεις, πρακτική άσκηση, εξαιρετικές προοπτικές εργασίας και με δυνατότητα διορισμού ως καθηγητής στη μέση εκπαίδευση. Βραβευμένη ως η καλύτερη σχολή νότιας Ευρώπης στις επισητιστικές τέχνες και με χρυσά μετάλλια σε διεθνείς διαγωνισμούς. Δυνατότητα για κρατική χορηγία. Inter College. Τυχείο. So let's take a quick look at how the live link works here inside of Twinmotion with the live link connecting Revit. So I have Twinmotion open here. All I have to do is go down and open up my Revit. If I have my model ready, I can just rotate around to confirm that the model is complete and it's exactly what I'm looking for. I can go through and just go over to the Twinmotion tab and click see in twin motion automatically it's going to open up twin motion and ask me if i want to add this to an existing project or if i want to make it a new project we want to make it a new project so select new project and click on ok and we're going to give the software a little time to uh, process and synchronize what we have from revit down to twin motion now for the ui it's relatively easy to understand how the ui works and for navigating the new UI, you have to hold down shift and rotate, and that's the same way you hold down shift and rotate right here inside of Twinmotion. If you want to change anything, you can go all the way to help and click on navigation and change to the navigation that best suits what you want to do. Twinmotion Live Link is so amazing because what it does is it takes out all of the components which you've added here right inside of Revit and recreates them and helps you uh, and cuts down your time of getting stuff you want to get done by say half percent. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can play with the materials after importing our files directly from Revit into Twinmotion or from any 3D app right into Twinmotion. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. I am... That's stupid. Mm. Okay, I'm on. Hi, in the previous video, we saw how we can import our model from Revit right into a twin motion. In this video, we're going to look at how we can apply materials to our model. And to do that, I'm going to select the floor plane and bring it down a little bit. I'll zoom closer to 
the component which I want to change the material. For example, the glass, I'm going to go over to the material library, which is here. Click on the material, select glass. And now in Twinmotion 2019, all you have to do is you can choose if you want to apply material by object or if you just want to replace by material how that works is i'm going to click and click i'm going to click and drag on the glass and automatically it's going to replace all of the materials that has the same material type i have one here so let me just quickly fix that and if you want to also uh, change materials based on the object all you have to do is switch over and say uh, change material by object and once i get that clicked so let's go over and try something that has to do with wood and that's how it's done so to each material that we have we have a slider here which uh, has to deal with the properties that the material has for example the glass material which we have here we can slide it up and down and we can go ahead and let me just get this selected you can we can go ahead and switch from the, the vast materials which we have here and also use those materials to replace them and well after replacing these materials we can choose to play with uh, how transparent they are and play with the metallicness and if you want them to be affected by weather we can turn this on we're going to be looking at how weather affects the whole look and feel of your model in subsequent videos. We can also change the color if we choose, depending on what we want. So now, because I am applying, because I'm applying this by object, if I go and replace all by material, for example, and I pick this material and I apply, it applies to all of the uh, materials that is related to the material which I replaced. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at decals and other stuff. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Wait, hey, honey, can you look at this? Does this sound like me? Hi, continuing from where we left off, we're going to be looking at decals here in Twinmotion 2019. How we can apply decals is pretty easy. One of the cool things with decals is it aids to make your work look either more photorealistic depending on what you're going for or maybe certain components are not really available so you can use decals as maybe paint overs on top of your models. So we're going to quickly look at decals and see how they can be applied. So I'm, I'm going all the way up and I'm going to click on furnitures. I don't know, but it lives here and we can click on decals. In 2019, there is a lot more decals than there was in the previous version of Twinmotion. So I'm just going to go all the way down and let's look for, we can use the slider and let's look for a manhole and i can click and drag this manhole somewhere here we can also increase the size of the manhole depending on what we want and let's uh, select this and press f to zoom right about there i can also come through and find some very grungy stuff just to play around here and we can apply this here just to give the feel that we have uh, a bit of moss here and stuff like that. So decals are a great way to add those imperfections or maybe add those uh, details that might be a little bit hard for you to get in when modeling your when modeling your scene. Try as much as possible to play with them and see how they work for you. In that way, you would know what to apply to your scene and how to push the boundaries of getting what you want. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can use other elements that has to do with construction and how we can play with the characters and also, more importantly, how we can use the flags. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, 
click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. One of the stuff that we're all uh, grateful about is the construction stuff. So if I come over to furniture where we left off and come back to city, if I scroll down, we have construction stuffs now. And these construction stuffs are so they're so nice because we can either bring them as one piece and choose to split them around. So I'm going to go through and let's say I'm dragging this construction set number 10 right into the scene and i'm dropping it here okay so now it's here i can choose to select one of them let me uh, get a hold of this i can choose to select one of these and position this where i want it to be so it's not necessary that you bring them as as a whole piece and then you cannot uh, break them apart it's a feature that i find to love a lot you bring in the whole stuff and then you can go ahead and and play with how they, they look. Other things that are very impressive is they've added more humans than they had uh, in previous version, more human characters. So if I go over to the human characters, they've added a ton of human characters. So now because we have a construction scene, I would like to find a construction worker somewhere around here. And here it says a tavern worker. So let me bring this all the way out oh this is nice and i can position this somewhere here just to fit into the description of what is happening here okay and i can also drag in another worker that seems to be putting on a different shirt a uh, different colored shirt which is not a problem because here in twin motion we can choose what color preset we want so it looks to me that He's putting on the color preset of number four. And we can also choose what animation we want this worker to have. So let's say I could choose something like five, which seems to be which seems to be nice. So we can have that working for us there. And one of the other things that you can do with the human characters that have been added here is you can get a character in here and you can play with how you want the character to behave. So I'm just going to zoom over to a character which we have here, just like in the previous uh, character example. You can also change what you want the character to be doing at a given time. Now, these characters that comes in from a different application, I don't really know if it is just me, but you cannot really move them because I think they are considered as being very static coming up from here. But if you can, uh, please tell me how you can do that in the comment section below. Flags are also one of the big improvements that has been added into Twinmotion 2019. And if we go all the way up, we can also uh, pick these flags from here. We can pick the flags from here. So uh, in previous version, we had a ton of flags, but now they've just simplified it to just the different types of flags that you can have, which is really nice because all we have to do is just pick this flag out. And then let's look at this. And when you get to change, you can scale the flag how you want it to be. So let me just scale the flag all the way up. By the way, you use the number four, five, and six to toggle around your uh, transform tool type. So I'm pressing five so that I can rotate the flag a little bit, say something about this. Good. And we can change the, the speed as well. We can also change the direction of the speed, uh, the direction of the wind, sorry. And also the fun part of this is 
when you go all the way, let me just get this flag selected. When you go all the way to where we have texture and you click on the open, you can select whatever flag you want. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Welcome to another 8th Wall Augmented Reality Video Tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a project that most of you are probably familiar with, Rollaball, and convert it to an augmented so we all know how fantastic reflection looks, especially when uh, we're doing a presentation with it. And for the most part, if you've been using uh, various softwares like Lumion and so on, uh, you find out that most of them end up using what we consider, what we consider as a screen-based reflection, which simply means that the reflection that they have may not be exactly. Uh, how should I say? Uh, should I say they're not so ideal? But then, let's uh, look at what we have here in the reflection probe that ships in with Twin Motion 2019. Now, if you look uh, at the if you look at the glass material which we have here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the picker tool to select it so that we can change the color back to white. Okay, you find out that we're having uh, the screen space reflection we're having something that looks like it it's actually mimicking what the reflection should look like but at the end of the day we're not getting the reflection so how do we add reflection here in 2019 all you have to do is come over to the volume and then you can click on reflection probes and we can choose to bring a box and automatically just even before placing it you're noticing a huge difference going on here yeah okay so i'm just going to place this somewhere here and then we can scale this and scale this sorry i think we need to scale from the middle okay i think we need to scale from here then okay so if i scale this all the way up you begin to notice that we're having the reflection of things going on here happening here let's try and see what it looks like before and after so if i turn this off this is what we have if i turn it on this is what we have so this is given uh is given more room to uh some sense of realism here and this is not something that you get in all of the visualization apps but because twin motion is built on unreal engine and we can get all of this fun stuff Okay, so with the reflection probe, we can go ahead and increase how bright or how dull we want the reflection stuff to be. And we can also update it depending on what is uh, going on. We can translate this, which simply means we can move it from side to side. Yeah, we can move it from side to side. And we can increase the scale depending on how much depth we want it to have or what kind of glass we're trying to, to mimic. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Okay, so let's quickly talk about autographic view. So uh, let's say you've you've been working in a perspective view all along and you just want to look at things in an autographic view or maybe you just want to render something in a given autographic view so how you can get that done is you click on the little eye icon here uh, click on views and now you can just click on back and you can see the back you can click here to see the front you can click here to see the top view and you can just jump back here to see the perspective and for maybe any reason you want to go ahead and play with how 
uh, your camera looks, you can do that by coming down to this part of the UI, click here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create image, click on the first image. Now having this image selected, I can click on more and change the camera setting depending on what I want to get. So now our uh, field of view is at 90. I can choose to drag it a little bit closer, say maybe something like uh, 50. It also gives you room to type this in. And then after typing this in, I can now zoom all the way out. Now with a feature like this, you can get stuff looking way, way better. And also other stuff that has been added into the new version of um, Twin Motion is the perspective uh, correction, which means that right now we don't have perspective correction turned on, but once we click here, it turns on. You might see it a little, there's just this slight difference from a certain angle. But I guess from an angle like this, it is uh, worth mentioning. I think this angle was better. I think it's worth mentioning that it makes a huge difference. You know, so previously what I, what I do is uh, I just pick the field of view and change it to what I want it to look like and then I am good with it. But this is nice, and also we've also uh, they've also added the vignetting, which means you can now go ahead and start adding those uh, eye candy stuff to your scene and making them look all stylized and, and stuff. So that's how you play with the camera, and all the stuff that you can do with the camera here is you can change the depth of field which means that you can actually uh, get a distance of what you want so i'm just going to go over here and let's let's believe that we want to focus on this dude okay so i'm just going to go back all the way here 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 and then so if I bring this all the way down and turn the radius just a little bit lower, we have a, a sort of dramatic feel that comes with it, yeah? And you can actually play with it uh, vice versa, depending on what you want. You can actually have a far blow and you can have a close up blow as well. So like I'm pushing this all the way up and the blow is becoming way more. And if I push this all the way up because I don't have a close-up blow, which is a near blow. We don't get to see it. I mean, you can see what it looks like with the icon there. Other fun stuff with the camera is um, you can also go ahead and play with the gradient that comes with it. So let's say you want it to be a bit more contrasty or maybe you want it to be a bit more saturated. You can do all of these. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. One of the new features that has also been added to Twinmotion 2019 is the measuring tool. The measuring tool is very helpful because right inside of Twinmotion you can choose to measure a distance, let's give an example like a distance from this wall to this wall. All I have to do is go over to Urban, switch to the measuring tool, click on the measuring tool and click and place it wherever I want. I can choose to change the scale of the tool as well. I can also get the, the length which it says here. Now uh, constraint is turned on in the sense that if I move one point or let's say i move one stuff from here to here it's automatically constrained to that point i'm going to give a quick example about how that is done with some volumes all right so now we have these uh two cubes here or two boxes now we have the two boxes here and looking at the constraint, how constraint works is if I have this selected, it means that if I by default change 
the distance of this that the measure tool is automatically constrained to this so it doesn't matter how far I take this or it doesn't matter how close it is once constraint is turned on the measuring tool is automatically there so like like right now we're getting the detail is 3.55 and if I increase this and select this one more time you see it's now 5.51 and this is very helpful because in situations where you're just trying to visualize your stuff, uh, maybe uh, before you move in to do a proper design, it's worth mentioning that with this tool, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of hassles of going back to Revit or maybe going back to your uh, default application where you're doing your stuff and getting your stuff done all over and all over again. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video. In this video, we're going to take a look at how paths work in Twinmotion 2019. So I'm going to jump over here and click on paths. And with this path, we can choose to create paths for different stuff. For example, we can choose to create a path for a character. We can choose to create a path for a vehicle and also a path for a bike and maybe a, a custom path. So for example, I'm going to create two different paths. Uh, the first one is going to be for a character, how that is done. If you click on the character, click on the pen, you can click and direct the character where you want it to go. So once you're done, you can right click and let it be and automatically it's going to spawn characters for you and these characters are going to walk all the way to where you want them to walk. You can increase the width depending on what you want. So let's say we need multiple people walking at the same time, maybe an airport or maybe people are going in for something and you can also reduce the, uh, the width as well. You can also play with the density, increase the number of people you want to be spawned out at a given time. Because Twin Motion is real time. At any point in time, I can update uh, the path and automatically the characters or the avatars are going to automatically update alongside with it. So let's say you've drawn this the wrong way and you want to reverse it instead of them going forward. You want them to go to the other direction. You can turn reverse on and automatically they would reverse okay so they would uh reverse you can also change the number of races that you want to have depending on what you're looking for so let's say you can uh, add up a uh, middle eastern or you can take off the european maybe take off the asian and just have depending on what you're going for you can play with this how you want it to be and other stuff that I would like to show uh, with the path tool is the path tool for vehicles. So I'm just going to quickly scroll all the way down and take out the pedestrian path so that we can look at the path tool for vehicles. And before I do that, I would like to also take a time to put up a little bit of um, bumps on the road just to explain. Okay, so now that we have this ready, I'm just using this as bumps. I'm going to click here and define a vehicle path. So I need the vehicles to drive from here, pass through this, go all the way round. Let's do something like this and pass through this and come here. And you know, you can go uh, and you know, you can create a loop depending on where you want and off the shelf, you would notice the reason I added this stuff. In Twin Motion, if you have if you have physics turned on, what happens is when the cars get to meet a bump, they go through the bump and physics is applied. So you can see that with the car coming through. Let's look at this. Okay, and because I put them in a loop. What happens is that, is that these cars are definitely going to be going through a uh, loop. I can increase, just like I can do with the pedestrian, I can increase the number of 
uh, people coming, I mean, the number of cars that I have here, I can also increase the speed of the cars and I can also reduce the speed of the cars as well. This is very, very intuitive. Now I can also go all the way up and increase the number of lanes I want the cars to have. And all of a sudden, we have traffic. Okay, cool. So we can also play with the lane offset depending on what we're going for. And let's offset this lane a little bit. We can, we can notice that the lane offset is happening here. It's closing in and opening out. It's happening there. I think this is a bit too tight. And if I expand this. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. Now let's have a look at the localization tool. The localization tool here in Twinmotion 2019 seems to be uh, one of those things that makes it look beautiful, yeah? Uh, how we can assess that is simple. We can go over to the image which we have here. If I click on more, I can come over to the localization and then I can select and choose where should be the knot. So let's say I want to offset our knot to be in a certain direction, I can choose where the knot should be facing inside of uh, Twin Motion 2019. So with this tool, we can also switch what month we're looking at. So it dramatically changes the way the whole look and feel of the um, scene is going to be. So now I just switched it to this. Now you see it's looking a little bit different. I am presently located somewhere within um, here. I'm located here somewhere in Cyprus and if I drag this all the way down to exactly this part which is where I am and I move this all the way to July it looks exactly like summer out here. There is no guess saying these guys have done a very wonderful uh, a very wonderful update to this new version hi before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen if you like what you've just seen click on the like button and hit the subscribe button don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video let's look at the weather okay so with the weather uh, turned on, we can actually switch to uh, a time where we have more skies, I mean more clouds in the sky, so our, our render can look a little bit better. And we can also play with how much wind we have. And you might have noticed like in previous uh, videos, where let's say we select something like this and it says when it is turned on and season is set to automatic and this is where it all plays out because if we change the weather the weather also affects the way the trees and uh, every other thing around it looks so i'm going to go over here and i'm just going to switch this all the way to sometime in christmas and now if you look at this Let's zoom close. You see that the whole trees have withered away and it's now covered in snow. And the same way we've done this is the same way we can actually make all the trees come alive. We'll go back to the weather and we switch this all the way up to this green, beautiful time of the year. And then we can also cause rain to fall. That is one nice feature as well. We can make rain fall and, you know, maybe make this some spring looking sort of stuff 
let's go back to our guy that's uh, working okay something like this and then what else what else do we have and yeah we can make the rain fall a little bit less you know just a little bit less and still have those very beautiful skies hi before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen if you like what you've just seen click on the like button and hit the subscribe button don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video So I'm going to come over here and come over to the image, click here, and then what you have to do here is you need to use this part that says time and switch to the time of day that you want. Yeah, so I have a time of day, say uh, something like uh, uh, late in the night about this time of the day, and I want to change how much uh, stars I have. What I need to do is I need to click add more and go all the way down to um, lighting, moon power, and then we can now play with how much intensity we want to give the stars. So now we have more stars and now we can push this all the way down and we can have uh, less stars. Now if for some reason you want to show the moon in your scene, let's see if we can locate the moon somewhere there. We can now play with how much phase we have with the moon. So we can make it a half phase moon, we can make it no moon at all, or we can just uh, play with uh, the moon coming out from the other side. Yeah? Very nice stuff. Very nice stuff. Now the GI, which means global illumination, is set to 1. You can actually increase the distance which you want to see the GI bounce, or you can just go through and just increase the GI itself. This may make your rendering a little bit slower, but at the end of the day, it's going to give you much more nicer light bounces. This would work in situations where you have light around your scene and most probably in interiors. Other stuff we can look at is we can look at the shadows and we can also look at the ambient occlusion. Yeah, If I come through and go over to this part where I have the shadow, I can choose to make the shadow blow out a little bit more which makes it a much more softer shadow or I can push it all the way down which is going to influence how hard the shadow would look like. You can also go ahead and play with the ambience of the general lighting and look at how that suits your scene. And also we can also play with the sun and also see how it suits your scene. If for some reasons you want to get something much more photorealistic, you can also play with the white balance and so on. So that is it guys. This is how you can play with your lighting inside of um, 2019. If you have questions about this, please uh, drop them in the comments section below and let's look at those questions and those comments. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video. So in the previous video, we talked about lighting and how we can get all this cool, nice stuff uh, working for us here inside of uh, Twin Motion. And now I just want to take this time to talk about the visual effect. This part is what we've not talked about, yeah? And how this works is quite simple, is extremely simple because all you have to do is just come over here, click on the visual effect, and then you can choose what you want to create as an effect. Yeah. So let's say if we need a color gradient, we can play with the color gradient of our shot or of our scene to just see what it looks like. And then we can also play with the filters that exist here to just give a feel of what we are trying to portray. So let's say we want to have a black and white, something like this, or maybe something much more like this. Or you just want to play with some Instagram sort of filters, you can go ahead and add those filters let's look at this and finally let's look at something like that so these are very nice stuff you can play with depending on what you're going for this is totally up to you also we have uh, other types of filters like that 
we have other kinds of filters like this and maybe stuff like this which would be nice for just prototyping and stuff for blueprints and all that and finally maybe if you want to just use this for some sci-fi stuff just to show maybe someone's walking within an area in your shot or if you're in your movie or something yeah clay rendering how does uh, this part of the visual effect work what i'm going to do to actually explain this part is i'm going to come over here and drag a car and position this car somewhere here and you know, uh, just like I said in previous videos, if you hold down the shift key and click and drag, you can make multiple copies. So I'm just going to make multiple copies of this. And then I can just come through and just pack, pick up somewhere around. Let me uh, capture a new image and let's use this. If I come over to visual effect, I can say I want to create clay rendering. If I turn this on, everything is automatically clay rendered. Now I need to change this color to white because I just want to see them as white clays. And I can also choose what I need to have as clay rendered stuff. I'm going to section and I'm saying I don't need the glass to be clay rendered. I don't need landscape to be clay rendered. I don't need the vegetation, the water, the characters, the items and other stuff. I just need the cars to be clay rendered. And so that's how you have your clay rendering. Yeah. You can also go ahead and you know turn off the cars but turn on the characters and only the characters will be clay rendered. This is going to be helpful especially when you just want to focus on the object and I mean when you just want to focus on the building and not on the characters and other stuff uh, around it. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we upload a new video. So, before we talk about rendering, I would like us to look at the vegetation and the ocean features which exist here. How this works is uh, pretty simple. How you can assess them is simply click on this uh, button which we have here, which is called Nature. And then you can click on Vegetation. And with this feature, you can go ahead, like if I'll show you in a moment, you can go ahead and paint a vegetation around where you want uh, the vegetation to apply. So I'm going to click on Grass. And now you see I have a very huge brush. If you are familiar with um, how you can paint stuff, maybe in Photoshop and stuff, it actually works the same, yeah? So all we have to do is let's crank this uh, stuff all the way down, the brush, and then we can simply paint the vegetation how we choose. Nice. And at the same time, we can turn down the density of what we want to paint and then we can go ahead and paint this all the way in and also stuff like this we can go all the way and paint it in we also have this eraser feature which simply means that we can erase parts of uh, the vegetation that we don't want to keep you can turn this all the way down and make it a little bit lower let's let's actually make this about three and then we can use it to do whatever we want. Now, painting grasses are not the only thing you can do with the vegetation um, with the vegetation tool. You can also choose to paint other stuff like this. So let's say I want to paint, uh, give me a second. So let's say I want to paint all of these puppies. I can go ahead and select the brush and then I can just paint the puppies all around. At the same time, I can choose to also clean up some parts that I don't need and I can also choose to paint in some trees. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead, click and drop this particular tree here. It's called black gum. And then I can paint in the black gum wherever I want it to be. So you have this uh, unlimited very unlimited options of things you can do 
at the same time you can choose to mix stuff up and just paint them where you want them to be or simply instead of doing all that if you want to individually hand place your 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 models you can also choose to click and drag and hand place your models where you want them to be Now we've looked at vegetation, let's take a look at the ocean feature here. So if I click on the ocean feature and click on enable, automatically you're going to see the whole place is filled with water and my workers are drowning. So what I'm going to do is I can bring the water level a little bit lower. Let's actually go ahead and place the floor down. And then we can just make it a minus one or maybe we can make it a minus two or maybe a minus 2.5 yes something like this and then it might balance out properly also we can change the type of water we want or the type of ocean we want to get our desired results. Hi, before you click the next video on the top right corner of the screen, if you like what you've just seen, click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates next time we we'll upload a new video. Hi and welcome to today's video. I will be sharing some tips and some quick shortcuts you can use when working inside of Twinmotion 2019. And the first one I'm going to share is with the transform keys or the transform gizmo, depending on what you call it. Like uh, normally, you know, for you to be able to move this, you have to come here, click and, you know, select one of them. Or you can go and press the numbers on your keyboard, like four, five and six, which is great. But then there is a shortcut key to toggle through these ones and it is the tab key. So once I press the tab key, I can toggle through through the transform tools. Yeah. And the next one I'm going to show you is uh, dealing with the materials and I'm going to show you that real quick. OK, so if I pick this and I select this board here, first of all, I may want to change it to a different color. And if I'm going to use this, whatever I'm going to show you wouldn't work. So it's best I go up all the way here and pick something like a brick and drop the brick right on top of here. I'm going to scale this a little bit so that we can see the effect of what I'm trying to explain. So if we go down and click on more, you see here we have speed, X and Y. We don't really know what this is used for because we most probably haven't used it before. I'm going to show you how that works. Of course, we know what rotation is. It means you need to rotate um, the texture that has been applied. But if we move this, say move X and we'll move it upwards, nothing is happening. Hold on. And if you move the speed up a little bit, you see the texture begins to animate towards the direction of X. Cool, isn't it? So I just really want to share that quick with you. One other thing I want to share, still speaking about motion, is when you press the W key on your keyboard, you simply move forward which everyone knows, but how do we uh, reduce the speed of motion? When you hold down Alt and press the W key, in most cases, let's see, it tends to move the camera a bit slower compared to when you move the camera um, Yes, in most cases, it tends to move the camera slower. So I'm just going to go all the way back and rotate this a little bit. Hold down Alt, press down Alt on your keyboard. You can use your arrow keys to move and slowly it's going to fly through your project. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is snapping. This is one thing uh, most people haven't gotten a hang of. You see, if I rotate this, it's snapping to the default, which is five. I can only snap to five. Now watch this, you see it goes from 45 to 
40, 35, and, and all that. But what if you want to snap to a certain angle and you don't want to keep doing this? You just want to rotate this to a certain angle and get your, uh, and get your object snapping perfectly fine. Maybe when you want to rotate your object. It's quite simple. All you have to do is go over to Edit, down to Preference, and here where we see the angle snap, you can change this to say 45. Now, every single rotation we do from now henceforth is going to snap to 45 degrees. Yeah? The same goes for here as well. So, it snaps to 45 degrees. What else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, yeah, custom part. Uh, I got a comment from, I got a lot of people asking me that uh, privately, and I'm going to show you how that works. So when I uh, go here and click on custom part, I'm going to show you two things that happens here. Most probably you've, you've never seen them before, or you've seen them, but either ways. So I'm clicking on the pen tool and I'm going to click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's lock it up with 10. Okay. Now you see automatically because I have a box here, the box begins to move. We all know that because uh, Twin Motion is real time, we can update our path anytime we choose, and the object that is following that path automatically move on with it. Now, what is the difference between this and the other ones which we can actually uh, work with? I'm going to show you just a tiny difference. One of the differences is, if I come over here to our outline, our inspector as I call it, you see if we pick this and drag it all the way up, our box is still down. Why? Why? I mean, why does this happen? This happens simply because physics is turned on. So if I go ahead and turn physics off, our box begins to float up. And what happens if we update the path as well? Once our box gets to that path, let's go to a closer path, something like this. Okay, let's take this all the way up, okay? Now, once our box goes to that path, it automatically updates and follows the path all through because follow is turned on. So what happens if we turn follow off? Once we turn follow off, what happens is our box still follows the object, but it doesn't bank when it gets to the point where it needs to, you know, uh, follow the steep or go high or go low. It's just like a flat object traveling through the, the path. So this is the effect that we're going to see if I turn this off. If I turn this on, you see it's following the path. You see it's having so much fun just going up and down. If I let's wait for it and I tap this and say turn off, you see you can see with that what's going on. Okay, so one more quick tip I want to share is most times if you're working inside of Twin Motion, I'm just gonna explain this, and you click on create image and you create your first image. Maybe you've seen this in previous videos, but I just have to say just in case you haven't seen it. And you see, I have just saved the time of day here. If you come here and you decide to move the time of day to say sometime like this, and you switch and come to this part, automatically something goes wrong. What happens is because you've captured that image, Twin Motion has saved the time of day respectively to that image. Yeah? So the only time you can change the time of day for this image is by clicking time and changing the time by yourself here. Okay? That's the only time you can do that. Now, any other thing you want to tweak that has to do with the way the, the image is going to look at the end of the day, you have to do them here. Let's say you want to play with the depth of field. For this particular image, you have to do it here. You don't have to come all, you don't have to go back here and, and start trying to fix those things. They wouldn't work. They wouldn't work. So you have to come here. You have to click on more, come to depth of field, turn depth of field on first of all, and then begin to play with the radius just to get uh, your depth of field working. The same thing goes for the lighting as well. If you want to uh, increase, let's say, the ambient occlusion, you can do that all by yourself here. And the same thing goes for the GI, the white balance, the shadows, and so on and so forth. 
So quickly before I forget, there was a, a comment on one of the videos where someone was asking about sound. I'm going to briefly explain to you how sound works inside of Twinmotion. If we go over to volumes and I click on sound, I go towards people or maybe city. Uh, let's pick one, let's say a busy expressway. Okay, now what happens is your sound has sizes. You can choose to increase the size. So the bigger the size, the more influence the sound is going to have within the image that I mean within within the scene yeah so if your sound goes all the way up if you scroll all the way away from the radius of the sound you are not going to be able to hear the sound so it doesn't really it doesn't really matter if it's uh, if you if you have your volume cranked all the way to 100 or if you change the shape to box or no it doesn't really matter what matters is what is the radius or what is the size of your audio of the sound you're putting in and let me go ahead and explain one more feature one more thing that you should probably know by now to explain this using a new scene so let's go to file new and say no we don't want to save this and we'll go over to i guess it's here context menu we'll go to context wait for it and what we're going to do is to just find a nice location somewhere about here and let's select this grab what we want okay let's grab what we want and say grab okay so twin motion is just going to download what it feels it's a house within those places and most of the things that it considers as buildings are these white patches while the black ones are considered as roads so let's wait for twin motion to download this all right then and twin motion has downloaded what we're looking for which is the context menu that we grabbed next we're going to do let's zoom all the way out okay uh the tip i want to share here is already yeah already we know we can select this and move it around if you don't know you just found out here okay now we can move it around we can increase the height or we can reduce the height so it doesn't matter how big or how small um, the context you downloaded is you can always increase and reduce the height you know just to fit into what you want to create you can uh, do that all all day you can do that anytime inside of twin motion of course and speaking about reducing and increasing uh, sizes and tearing things apart one other thing or oh, some other stuff you can still tear apart is the contents yeah so i'm going to go over to the living room hmm let me go select the sofa and let's drag this sofa all the way out it's going to be a small one if I press F to focus on it, you know already. What I would do next is I would come through, and this sofa is a group. So, for example, you want more of these pillows around, you can come through and just select them. Hold down Control and select. So, you can select multiple copies, press Tab to toggle through and then you can hold down shift and make a copy okay you can hold down shift to make a copy or an instance like we've just done and I think we're still snapping to 45 so I will go over here and go to preference come down and say we don't want to snap to 45 no more we just want zero okay and say okay so what if you don't want all of these to be in the same place you can simply come here because you see they're all in a group and you can just select them and take them out of the group and now when you select the sofa you can move the sofa wherever you want what a great way of destroying stuff okay this is cool what more what more what more one other thing i think you should know is 
Here in the preference tab, you can always change what unit system you are using. Mm -hmm. And also, before you export, I would advise that you turn this on just in case you have reflections or you have the reflection probe in your scene and you know you have that nice looking stuff or maybe you made an update to it put this on so that whatever updates you have on your viewport so that you can see those updates in your final render and speaking of reflection the differences you get is this you may choose maybe because of performance issue to turn this down sorry to turn this down in your viewport but leave it high when you're about to export when you're about to export, leave it high. And also, if you're using a 24 hour clock or if you like working with a 12 hour clock, this is where you can switch things up, okay? Quality, you know about this, you know about all of this stuff, and that's it. Okay, so before I end the video, there are a couple of keys I just remembered, I didn't tell you guys about, and I'm going to tell you guys about them. If you press on your keyboard for example let's say you want to hide something you don't like it you just don't want to see it on your scene just press H and it's hidden huh and if you press H one more time it brings it out you see and also remember in the previous videos I explained how you can use this to toggle around your orthographic view you can just simply press O on your keyboard and toggle around those views okay Instead of coming here all the time, you can just simply press T on your keyboard and, you know, pick a material and do whatever you want to do with the material. And for those guys that like trying to see what is going on in the whole scene and you don't want to see all of these things around, what you can do is you can come here, go over to the eye and select this uh, first person uh, character. And the same way you use your shift and your middle mouse button to rotate, that's the same way you'll be able to rotate around your scene. So I think these are quite helpful tips for you guys that are getting into Twin Motion, or maybe you've been using Twin Motion for a while. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and maybe you figured out uh, Tino 2 or learned the Tino 2 from the tutorial. So that's it, guys. If you have comments about this video, if you have questions about what I've just explained, please drop them in the comment section below. And like always, like, share, tell someone, and subscribe if you haven't done that. Peace.
Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be addressing the part two in Twin Motion 2019. I've got a couple of questions from various viewers and they still have a bit of a problem trying to understand how the part two works with custom tools. In today's video, I'm going to be downloading an elevator from the internet and I will use this elevator to explain how to make use of the part two, import it into your library and also assign characters or props into this part two and use it for your project. Why I chose the elevator is because it's a very good example to show how the path two work. Also, I'll be showing how you can change the movement and direction of the path two and how you can open up your imported project and add other models into them, save them and make changes to your imported models. So sit back, relax, grab a coffee or some nuts and watch the video.
So I guess within the process of watching the video, you must have understood how the path to works. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, share with your friends, and don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get updates the next time we upload a new video. Peace.